one of the pieces of advice I give to aspiring authors, I think is really important is that if you're going to get criticism for a book, it's way better to get it before the book is released rather than after. The reason I share that is because sometimes we're really nervous about criticism or being challenged, but once your ideas are out there, then it's open to a whole different ballgame. And I don't think we should be resistant or reluctant to spread those ideas, knowing they can be criticized, but really kind of reaching out to people that you can trust and will give you honest feedback to help you get better is a really crucial part of the process in how we not only learn, but how we share our learning with others. And that's what I thought about when I had this great conversation with David Domena. He is actually one of the co-contributors to my latest book, What Makes a Great Principal. And I think this book is really fascinating in the way that it is talking about what great principals do, but it's not from the perspective of only people who have served in their role or people that supervise them, but from the people they served. And so David wrote his chapter basically from the perspective of a teacher about a principal who had an impact and why they had an impact on him. And I thought it was really, really powerful. And I'm so glad that the story has been shared and it's going to be in this book. But you can learn a little bit more about David, his incredible principal, and the process of writing in this episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am really blessed to have David Domena on the podcast today. He is a STEAM teacher in Southern California, and he is actually one of the co-authors of What Makes a Great Principal. He wrote a chapter in the book um, under the uh, pillar of being a visionary, uh, and he titled it The Goldilocks Effect. I'm going to ask him about that. So really, I, David, this is actually the first time we really got to sit down and chat with each other and just, you know, uh, we have a very similar history uh, in education, a lot of the same interests. So I've been just love talking to David, but David, if you could just tell everyone uh, who you are, what you do today, how you got there, I think it's a great place to start. Yeah. Thanks so much again for having me, George. This has yeah. been a wild time and uh, I keep saying <laughs> incredible. It's been, it's been incredible. Let's say that. I'll take again. it, man. I'll take it. <laughs> I gotta uh, put yeah, incredible, David, I gotta put incredible in the title somehow of the podcast, right? Yeah, it's got to. <laughs> I'm just gonna put the incredible David Domana there. <laughs> <laughs> too kind, too kind. Uh, yeah, so like George said, my name is David Domana. I'm a, a STEAM teacher in Southern California. This is year nine of me teaching. Um, fifth year, no, third year in this role. Sorry, third year as a STEAM teacher. So I'm a, a specials or a prep period for the the other teachers on campus. They come bring their kids to me and drop them off for a while. I like to say that I'm the fun uncle. So I get them all riled up. We get all crazy. We do crazy science experiments and do wild things. And then I send them on back to their, their moms and dads and they got to deal with them the rest of the day or the rest of the week. So i um, super blessed to be here. And I, I did come to education as a second career. So like I said, year nine, and I was in real retail warehousing before where I um, wasn't a big fan of it. But got through some tough times and really found out what I wanted to do with my life. And I feel like that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. And you know, it's a better fun uncle than the drunk uncle, right? Like that's a, <laughs> that's also, that's also a thing too. So um, your, your title in the book, what makes a great principal is titled the Goldilocks effect. So uh, I don't know. I don't like, I know the process takes a little while. So I'm like, do you even remember what you wrote? Cause it's like, you know, you write it, it has to go through editing, all this other stuff. Um, one of the things about what makes a great principal, and I, I'm really proud of this, um, Allison Apsey and I kind of set the parameters and we did the research on like what, what things make uh, principles really effective, but we didn't just say like, we didn't go from like a top down perspective. We said like, who are the people they serve and, and why does it matter to them? So this is actually a lot from the perspective of students and teachers, which a lot of principals ask for, but now we put a book together. So we'll see if you really want it. So uh, I think that that's really powerful, but tell, tell us about that, that idea of the Goldilocks effect and how it kind of went through in your chapter and what you wrote about. Yes. Yeah, so <clears throat> when Allison first reached out, I wasn't quite sure. Cause I think this year nine, like I said, I think I've had five admins so far. So um, I had my, my choice, you know, I had kind of a, a wide range to <laughs> right. choose from there, but um, it, it was kind of a no brainer once I really sat and thought about it. Leslie Burkhart, she was the lady I worked for. Um, she kind of took over in my second year and uh, she wasn't the one who hired me initially, but then she was the one I feel like 
and it was a short time. I only it's like maybe a year, year and a half that I worked for her, but mm-hmm. I feel like I grew the most under her uh, kind of tutelage. And the Golden Locks effect was just something that popped in my mind because she seemed like she was just right, you know, for not only for me, which it was easy for me to say that, but I saw how she interacted with the kids. I saw how she interacted with you know, parents, the, the union, the teachers, the other staff members, kind of all the stakeholders involved. And I didn't see anyone leaving interactions with her, like with a, a sour look on their face or disappointed or even frustrated. And there were some tough times we had, uh, we had to make some changes on, on that campus, but she was working with teachers that like the lady I worked with my first year, she was in year 26 back then. And I was in year one. So just in the same grade level, she had a huge different uh, kind of outlook that she had to work with. And um, I was just really, I found myself really impressed with how she was able to, to interact with so many different people, so many different issues. We know the issues that principals deal with on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. Um, and she just never seemed overwhelmed or she never seemed like she was uh, struggling or grasping for answers. She, Even that early in her admin career, she she just seemed like she knew what she was doing. She was just right for everyone involved. You know, so uh, I, I wrote about, I can't remember, I think it was because of a teacher, because of a teacher too. I wrote the story about um, uh, when I was coaching basketball. You and I had a long conversation about basketball. And I grew up watching NBA, watching coaches yell at refs. And that was like, just kind of what I thought I was going to do. And I remember it was probably my third game. I was yelling, just yelling at the refs. And all my kids on my team were getting texts, right? And they were like yelling at the refs. And I'm like, what are you doing? Stop yelling at the refs. That's my job. And, you know, like not knowing, I wonder where they're getting this from. Right, right. right? And uh, one of the refs, pulled me over and he said to me, he goes, Hey George, cause he knew me cause I coach football against him. So like we actually had a bit of a relation. I was yelling at him anyway, but whatever. Right? <laughs> so he pulled me over and he's, he didn't give me a tech, but he said, he goes, you know, these kids love you. It's obvious. So whether you're a good influence or a bad influence, they're going to do what you do. So if you want to keep yelling, that's where those kids are getting it from. And it was like instantly, I was like, that was it. No more yelling at the refs. I never actually got a tech ever again. And really? <laughs> yeah, like it was, it's weird. Cause there's like certain moments in my life. I can pinpoint a conversation or something was said The one we talked about earlier about like, never let an eight year old ruin your day. Boom. That was like a t- turning moment in my life that like these kids look up to you. So they're going to follow whatever you do turning moment in my life. Yeah. And it's the same thing, you know, when someone's like, I really believe a lot of anxiety is passed down. It's like when people feel anxious, someone, whether it's a parent, it, you know, whether it's a teacher, you know, like, Hey, teachers get stressed about state testing. Guess what? Kids are going to be stressed out too. So when you have that calmness, you know, it really kind of sets the stage for everything there. And, you know, and I do appreciate it. one of the nicest compliments I ever got from a student. Uh, it was one of my basketball players and he saw me interacting with the phys ed teacher. Um, some other players and some kids who I taught were in elementary school. And he said, you treat everybody the same. Like you, you mess with everybody. It doesn't matter if they're the superintendent or a grade two kid. And I was like, yeah, of course I treat everyone the same. Right. Cause you know, That's you, right, yeah. you want to like, you know, you want to try to make those special <clears throat> connections. So I love that. So I want to ask you this and I'm going to, I want to ask you about some of the stuff you're doing at steam right now, but because you got to um, share, you know, your story in this book, what was that writing process for you? Cause I know there's a lot of people who listen to this. They're like, yeah, I want to write a book. I want to, you know, go through this. What was that like? Was it like, were you stressed? Like, was it hard? Was he like, what was that like for you? Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm like you said earlier, we we're kind of harshest to the people we love the most. So I'm, I'm super hard on myself. Like <laughs> I'll give you grace all day or my kids or my, the people I work with. But then when it comes to me, I'm like, no, nope, got to do better. Got to keep pushing. Yeah. Um, so when I got the offer in, initially your my first thought was like yeah i can do something like that but then i immediately after you know i don't even finish the first thought the next one comes in no you can't (laughs) who wants to hear from david domena steam teacher in southern california you know like teaching for nine years what do i know about anything so um i kind of had to work through that uh, imposter syndrome type of stuff and uh, but the process was pretty seamless allison was amazing to work with she's always available so i did have questions like well what do i do with this and um finally she she just told me you know get something on paper get something out there and and we can work with 
whatever you put together. If it's really bad, I'm going to tell you it's really bad. And if it's really great, I'm going to tell you it's really great. So that kind of pushed me to like stop second guessing myself so much, just sit down, bang something out and submit it. And then I was perfectly okay with, um, with you guys coming back being like, we like the title and that's it, you know, start from scratch, dude, and start right, all over. Right. Again. <laughs> or I, I was open to the other way too. Maybe they're going to love it. Who knows? We'll see. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and there's notes, you know, you always got to change some things around. I'm not a professional author by any means. So, um, but everything I got was very constructive and I was able to build off of that and kind of, uh, implement some more like specific stories Allison asked for or kind of, I would kind of trail off on a story or a tangent and she like, here, let's cut that off and bring it back. And hmm. so it was, uh, it was much more concise than I, than I kind of anticipated. You know, so, um, like I'm co-owner of her, like not only, you know, obviously Alice and I are like leading on this book, mostly Alice and I want to give her all the credit in the world because we kind of came up with the concepts and then her and I fleshed everything out. I'm like, Hey, now you have to run with the rest of it too. And she's absolutely amazing and just incredible. But one of the things that we talk about all the time, you want the criticism before the book is released, not after. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to hear that sucked. If I want to hear it sucked, I want to hear it before. And then not when it's on the shelf somewhere. (laughs) Yeah. But when it's, you know, when it's, it feels like, I know it sounds weird. It feels like it's written in, like it's literally written in stone. It might as well. Cause it's like, it's on a book. That's it. So yeah, it's out there. That, I think that mentality is really helpful. And you know, that, that openness to that is, is really, really important, you know, from your perspective as well, because, you know, I, I remember the, the first time when I wrote innovators mindset, it was like, Hey, just heads up. Like you're going to get some, there's going to be a lot of red marks in here. I was like, okay, like whatever. And it was like, it was like red, like sea of red. <laughs> and I was like, man, I suck. But you know, and then you start, it's kind of, it's kind of a cool process. Cause you're like, wow. Like I, they took about a hundred words out of that sentence. And I still said the same thing. I just add stuff in like, you you, you know, and that tightening up process is, is really really cool. So, Hey, the last question I'm going to ask you, because you and I spend so much time talking about other stuff that I don't have much time for actually recording. (laughs) We both have places to go. Um, what, what do you love about your job right now about teaching steam and your school, you know, connecting all these kids, like what, what's something that really kind of resonates with the work that you're doing right now? Um, man, I appreciate that. I know we talked earlier about, you know, different obstacles this year has been kind of a rough year. And um, I'm just able to point back to earlier experiences, like a rough day in education is not as bad as it can seem, you know, and like right now I'm on spring break. So I get two right. weeks off. I don't even have kids to teach. If I was, if I woke up one morning, I was raring to go. There's no kids on campus. So I'm off. Like I didn't have that experience in my last job, but um, I just love like making experiences for kids, having the kids, remember something positive from education or from the, their time in elementary school. And I think late now that I'm getting later in my career, I'm, I'm able to switch it up a little bit more too. like the art galleries I talked to you about, or um, our PE coach has a pickleball tournament going on right now. So we're playing pickleball I'm playing pickleball. With the, mm-hmm. I have a student partner that we're playing with um, just building up those kinds of memories or even um, we did a dance a couple of years ago, a Valley, our school's Valley elementary. So we called the Valley Tines dance and, right around Valley or Valentine's day, we did a huge dance for the kids and their families. And so it's not only cause I, I like to implement what I'm into, you know, sports and, hmm. and Marvel. I love the MCU and all that kind of, I like to push that into the classroom cause it's what I care gotta about, come, but, um, got to come to Orlando, man. There it is again. <laughs> lots, of, lots of that stuff. I'm just saying there's lots of that stuff. Here. Yeah. yeah. It's all over. So, um, now later in my career i'm starting to implement different things like the art galleries and stuff like that so it's not only what i'm into but i'm kind of starting to notice what the kids into or i found i had a fourth grade teacher this year they had their uh, their students write me birthday cards in october and you know most of them oh mr d you're the best or mr d you make steam for whatever you're silly whatever but one one girl who has probably said 10 words to me in three years she wrote like a, a paragraph and she wasn't supposed to do that. That wasn't the assignment, but she did that. Mm-hmm. So I saw and this girl can, she can kind of write. So now I turned into George Kuros, right? Now I'm the one editing her writing and stuff. But um, we have this company that lets us uh, submit student work and they'll publish it if it if it makes the cut. I think they kind of publish most of the work. But uh, we did it last year with three kids got into it. And this year 
I went right to her and said, Hey, I'm going to have an opportunity for you in a couple months. And I want you to consider it because it's all about writing and you already show me you're an amazing writer. And she, she submitted, hopefully she's going to get into it. And so just making experiences like that, memorable experiences for these kids across the whole, the whole range of things that we can do. That's my favorite part of the job for sure. Yeah. And as you know, we were talking earlier, one of the things that I loved that you said is about, you know, you didn't really have teachers that you remembered in a very positive way. And I'm sure you're being that for so many kids in your school. I want to correct something you said. I am not editing anyone's stuff because if I did, <laughs> it would suck. So that is not <laughs> my strength. Other people do that too. So, <laughs> so if the editing sucks, it ain't me. I'm just saying. It's not George. Yeah, because well, I took it back. Like I got Allison's notes. I was like, ah, oh, George hates this. George. I, oh God, I no. Oh God, no, no, no. God, I'm like the worst. I'm. Yeah, it's just not. That's not my strength. So, and I promise you, if I, if if I edit it, everyone would know because it would suck. So. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. David, man, you know, one of the things I love about doing this podcast is I get to meet people that I don't really know. And then I've made so many good friends. I feel you're coming to Orlando, man. You're coming to Orlando. So I'm going to hit a magic game up and I'll take it. I'll drop you off at Disney for the Marvel stuff. Cause I ain't going to that. That's a little too much for me, but, but Hey David. So make sure everyone uh, connect with David. Awesome guy, got lots of great ideas and make sure you check out his, his chapter and what makes a great principal. It's one of the things that we loved about this book is really what makes a great principal from the, the teacher perspective. Uh, so I can't wait to get your writing out to the world and, and you know, see how it resonates. And then we'll find out if it sucks or not, right? Yeah, then we'll know for sure. <laughs> they will know. They hey will George, know. I have to say thank you to you, man. You and Allison, um, I know we talked earlier about, you know, someone approached you and you were a big deal to them in their eyes. and. And you guys are big deals. And I tell Allison this all the time, like she's big time, you know, she's seven time awesome. author or whatever, just for you guys to give a, a platform for, for people like me, like a, a nobody teacher in Southern Stop California, it, man. it means, it means a lot, man. So I appreciate what you guys are doing, just building up teachers out there. Cause I know there's other people that you can connect with and you're going to make their day too. So thank you, uh, man. Hey, don't you're a huge deal, man, in my eyes. So I love it. We love that, you ha that you're a part of this too. So I'm excited to see it get out to the world. But everyone, thank you so much for listening. David, thanks for those kind words. I was not expecting that. So it kind of threw me off. But uh, thanks so much for being on the podcast. And thanks for, for writing the book. I can't wait to get out. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone. Have a good day.